Good morning. We'll make a start, I think. We'll have plenty of time for networking and catching up, so promise we'll, we'll do that later on. Good morning and welcome to the Ag Tech Field Day. My name is Matt Stevens from ABC Riverland and I'll be your MC for today. Let's uh, begin the day by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today and pay respects to their elders past and present. We extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today as well. We have a very tight schedule to get through today and it's not all about sitting here and listening to people talk, even though that's going to be very interesting, I don't begrudge that at all, but uh, there is a lot of interaction going on as well, so we'll be up and, uh, and moving around too. To start the day, I would like to introduce the member for Chafee, Tim Whetstone. No doubt most of you, or if not all of you, would have uh, at some stage over the past 11 years while he's been elected member seen Tim. Uh, before Mr Whetstone was elected as member for Chafee, he grew wine, grapes and citrus at properties in Renmark and near Overland Corner. During this time, he was director of the Renmark Irrigation Trust and also chairman of the South Australian Murray Irrigators. Among other things, as the member for Chafee, Mr Whetstone has played a leading role in his community's response to water reform in the Murray-Darling Basin and continues to advocate for a fair and balanced outcome for the Murray and for river communities which rely on it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr Tim Whetstone. Thank you, Matt. Uh, welcome, everybody. Great to have you, uh, have you here. And obviously, everyone's here for a very good reason, and that is uh, that um, we're having our Ag Tech Expo today. Um, presents opportunities, but it, more importantly, it presents uh, a conversation around the room. And uh, for many of you that are uh, progressive farmers or progressive uh, people within your industry, it's really important that that, that conversation continues. Um, and, and that's why myself, uh, as the local member, but also former uh, Minister for Primary Industries, I saw that huge opportunity uh, as a grower, uh, as a representative uh, uh, community person, there was, uh, the, the opportunities came far and plenty. Um, here at Loxton, I guess, uh, this institution is no, no stranger to some of the pioneers uh, within ag tech. Um, there are many here. Um, modern day uh, people in this room, um, I won't mention all of you, but the four Peters always come to mind. Uh, Peter Glash, uh, Peter McGarry, Peter Buss and Peter Weir. Those, uh, those four gentlemen um, were instrumental in some of the, uh, the ag tech that we uh, commonly use today. Uh, but uh, I think what we'll see for the future, the, the extension of what they brought to not only this region, uh, but what they brought to uh, modernising um, telemetry, modernising agriculture, I think uh, should not be understated. Um, and uh, the opportunities that I saw coming into, into a government that I uh, passionate about the, the ag sector, but also more passionate about how do we advance, how do we actually make the ag sector a better place, not only uh, in doing what we do, growing food, uh, being more efficient, you know, we've led water reform uh, over many decades, but how do we lead um, our space in um, using, using less water with, uh, with more product, growing better product, uh, I guess pandering to the, the expectation of the world's, world's uh, needs and want for, uh, for clean, safe food. But uh, you know, I guess monitoring it on farm has been uh, something that I've witnessed over my time as a grower, but now as in, just as importantly, um, as, a, as a state member, um, I look at opportunities and I look around the room here and there are pioneers here that work, work in their, on their properties every day, but more importantly, they talk to their neighbour, they talk to industry groups uh, and they bring collective uh, interest, to, I guess, to the table. Um, and I, I just huge amount of opportunity, not only setting up the Ag Tech Advisory Group uh, and announcing the, uh, the Ag Tech Strategic Plan, the government's agenda uh, has to be continued and uh, today is about continuing that conversation. Um, and I, I guess along the way, having those conversations is critically important and it's underpinned uh, by the Loxton Research Centre um, and other research centres around the state, having an open door policy, and that's something I saw very clearly um, in some of my study trips uh, into the US, Israel um, and elsewhere, was about governments not only providing an institution, but leaving the door open so that business could come in, so that growers could come in, they could have that conversation, but they could also provide extension to what was going on. And I saw for far too long uh, these research centres closed-door policy, uh, everything was done in some level of secrecy, 
um, and I thought that had to stop. And so uh, what we've seen is a, a partnership, a, pu a public-private partnership, and uh, if we look down at Struan, Kobe Biolite, we look here at Loxton, and, and other uh, facilities that uh, are, are in the winds of, of opening up their doors, um, that, that private-public partnership now gives extension to um, I guess a ready, readily available uh, level of funding, expertise, uh, but more importantly, it's having people like yourselves as growers, uh, as leaders, being able to go into an institution, um, ask questions, look for some support, uh, wanting some trials done, whether it's here at the research centre or whether it's done on farm. This is what ag tech is all about. It's about sharing knowledge um, and it's about progressing what this region is about. It's underpinned by agriculture, food production, uh, and it's, it's underpinned by efficiency gains. And that's why uh, many of you are here today to, to learn about what is the next step, what is the, the, a piece of advantage I can use within my farm. Um, sadly, we've seen some storms uh, through the area over, over recent days. So whoever can, uh, whoever can de develop some of that technology to, uh, to combat some of those storms or separate the skies or the, the dark clouds, um, you know, you, you're gonna make some money. But, uh, you know, we have seen one of the, the great insurance policies that is now making itself very visible, and that is protected cropping under shade. Um, it's coming with some complexity, it's coming with cost, but it is coming to give a level of assurance and a level of protection um, into some of our, our, our cropping um, sectors. So I think, uh, you know, today I, I hope that the conversation continues. I, I really do hope that. Uh, you know, people will gain benefit out of everything, every conversation, anything that we hear and see today. Um, the uh, the Minister, uh, David Basham, will be up later on today. He's, uh, he's going to visit the region uh, and have a look at some of the storm damage. And I think he is also going to, to call past here at some point in the afternoon. So we'll look forward to that. But uh, I think more importantly, um, it's really, you know, again, everything's important when it comes to ag tech, but it's important that all of you um, you know, have that conversation, look, learn, uh, share knowledge, uh, and uh, you know, sharing knowledge is, uh, is absolute gold when it comes to, uh, to, to our businesses progressing and becoming better, bigger, uh, and stronger, and more resilient. So enjoy the day, and uh, I look forward to those conversations. Thank you.